Oh, hello, it's another unscripted video pack opening. Today we're asking the question, are there Magic the Gathering packs in a McDonald's box? Well, not officially, but a funny thing happened to me when I went into my local game store. Someone had left this very kind package for me on a Happy Meal that said, for the professor from the community. And inside of it, was something very, very special. Lots and lots of Magic the Gathering packs from throughout Magic's history so that I and my friends could have a Chaos Draft. And I know that probably I should have just opened these up with my friends and had a chaos draft, but what I'd like to do today is open them up, keep the packs separate so that I can still have that wonderful chaos drafts with friends. Don't worry, I have the memory of a goldfish. I'm not going to remember what's in any of these five minutes later. And then maybe, since this was a gift from the community to me, I'll have a little gift from me to the community. Let's see what's in these. Oh! But first, a quick word about this video. This video is brought to you by Star Trek Fleet Command. Do you want to explore the final frontier to go boldly where no one has gone before? Then you want to check out Star Trek Fleet Command, a free-to-play mobile open-world strategic MMO that lets you explore the Star Trek universe. The original series, the J.J. Abrams films, Discovery, and more, including Kirk, Spock, Michael Burnham, Data, and Geordi. Explore the entire Star Trek universe from your favorite Star Trek shows, where you choose your own path and discover mysteries only you can solve. Combat is real time in an open world where you defend your allies and punish your foes. Star Trek The Next Generation has always been my favorite Star Trek series, and in this game, I can play with the Enterprise D and customize it to find the perfect balance of powers. I can unlock iconic characters and have them as officers. Who wouldn't want Picard on the bridge? The mission system is story-driven, and there are thematic adventures that are updated monthly, keeping the story fresh and engaging. And for a limited time, if you make it to level 5, you will unlock a free Origins Burnham. If you also reach level 10 by February 10th, 2022, you will be given the shards to tear up your Origins Burnham to rank 2. Star Trek Fleet Command is available on iOS and Android. Links in this video's description that allow you to make it so today. Thank you, Star Trek Fleet Command, for sponsoring this video. So this is touching in so many ways and just exciting because I love chaos drafts. And if you've never done a chaos draft, well, I can't recommend it enough. It's in like a normal draft, except you and your friends take booster packs from throughout Magic's history and just open them up and draft them and see what happens and what synergies you can find and what crazy plays will be made. Let's see what's in here. So this wonderful gift and the person, I hope they're watching. Thank you very much. You really made my day. It was a really touching gift. And you didn't leave any information with the card store about who you are. So I guess it's just a beautiful act of kindness on behalf of the community. Thank you. And there's a lovely little letter, which I haven't read. Maybe that'll say who you are. We'll find out. But we have these. We're going to go through it all. Let's start here with these packs. I guess we'll just do this. Let's start with War of the Spark. This was a pretty powerful, very cool set. Sky Theater Strix. So I'm putting these off camera, by the way, together so that we can just pass the pack piles around. I'll even throw the wrapper back around them. So don't worry, these are getting played with. That's very important to me. And again, don't worry, I have the attention span of a goldfish, so I will not remember any of this afterwards. Nahiri, here of course is where we had planeswalkers at different rarities. And speaking of rares, there's our rare. I'm using a new camera, by the way. That was also part of the excuse to do this. How does it look? Let me know in the comments. I'm hoping this looks really clear and allows me to pick it up, but also put it down. 
And also, just go on to the next. Oh, I love that assassin token. So I'll just put those aside. And let's move on to Time Spiral Remastered. One of the best things to happen in Magic the Gathering in 2021. And also, one of the worst being that no one could get it. So it's very apt that our ad card says, looking for magic in all the wrong places. Well, that was Time Spiral Remastered in a nutshell. I really hope the next set is something very cool, but also something that they print very heavily because I think remastered sets, Simeon Spirit Guide, beautiful. Icker Slick, Dark Withering. I think remaster sets are a great way to be able to give us reprints and draft sets in one. Mystical Teachings, another popper card, Popper Tutor, and our rare is a Tomb Stalker. Rare is a Tomb Stalker, but we also have our Time Shifted card here. A Consuming Aberration in that beautiful old frame. Look at that. And I'm playing around with my fancy new camera setup. Thank you, Star Trek Fleet Command, <laughs> for allowing me to get Fancy new camera setup, and give a lovely gift back to the community at the end of this video. Oh, what a great set. Look at that goblin token. Let's move on to another high-powered set of recent year, Throne of Eldraine. Throne of Eldraine, I was, I was a little off on at the time, not in terms of what the cards did, which I liked, but I had a bit of an issue with it being a little too on the nose with some of the real world meta references. A lot of people disagreed with me and that's fair. We seem to have our rares in front. Was that a thing of the set? Me and my goldfish memory can't recall if that was a thing of the set or we just got one of those, oh, Flax and Intruder, beautiful. One of those packs that are in reverse order. But I think that time and history is looking very kindly on Throne of Eldraine. I really do. And I think that if Throne of Eldraine just hadn't had Oko and Once, Once Upon a Time, or what was it? There was one more? I think that really ruined the stew, as they say, and ruined people's opinion on the set. I think it was a great set. Just had some issues. Take a look at Theros. Do people mind that I'm not showing prices? That would require a lot of post-editing work. We'll do the booster box game. We've done it for Crimson Vow twice now. I will not be doing it for double feature. My goodness, will I not be doing it for double feature. Commune with the gods. That's another great card. I remember playing this set, original Theros, when it came out, and I really, really liked Heroic. It was my favorite thing about this, was Heroic. Dark Betrayal, look at that art. Oh no, oh, I hate this rare. This rare was worthless then and it's worthless now. This is like 10 cents. There's a dud. And that wonderful boar token. I forgot how much I love those. So let's go from old Theros to new. Theros Beyond Death. Theros Beyond Death did not resonate with me quite as much as the original Theros block. And I think that might be the key, is that word block. I've really come around to believe that we need to go back to the three set block. And no, I do not think that the current Innistrad double set and then double feature, boo, double feature, really is the same thing. I think that we need a year on each plane to stretch out and enjoy the storytelling. I thought at first that uh, Gangs of New Capenya was a part two to our return to copy Kamigawa. I thought, oh, we're doing cyberpunk. Kamigawa is the introduction, and then we're gonna go see the cyberpunk gangs. 
Idyllic Tutor. Oh, this is great. This is wonderful. Tutor card for Commander. I can search my library for an enchantment card, reveal it, put it into my hand, which is great. Shuffle my library, three cost. That's very nice. That goes right in my Tesa deck. What'd you think of the uh, Theros Skylands? I did not really care for them too much. They run me a Pokemon energy. I also disagree with the fact that our land is sky. How does that work? Not to get all Jerry Seinfeld. I mean, what's the deal with Theros Skylands? Is it land or is it a sky? But they just didn't resonate with me. They're beautiful. I'm not saying they're not beautiful, but maybe pushing the envelope in design a bit too far. I don't know, or maybe I'm a crank. Let me know in the comments below, am I a crank? Am I a lovable crank? I know I'm a crank, but come on, you've been watching Tolarian Community College for eight and a half years now, or at least I've been around that long. This is no surprise that I'm a crank, and you either like it at this point or you hate it. And if you hate it, what are you still doing here? Corsets are going away, I really like them. I understand why they're going away. Well, they went away, and then they came back, and now they're going away again. Goblin ringleader, oh, so good for goblins. Brought back. Choose up to two target permanent cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. Return them to the battlefield. Tapped, uh, pretty good, except it has to be this turn, but double white, yeah. But I see why we need core sets and why you need that kind of a dud set in a way to provide certain cards that you can't get elsewhere. And so I'm a little nervous about them getting rid of them. Now we're going to core set 2019. Core sets also have, because they're so unpopular in a lot of ways, this very interesting advantage that many of the cards don't get opened as much and thus the rares and especially mythics from certain core sets really go up in value because there just wasn't a lot of them opened or even printed. Manolith, that's an interesting little commander dud. It's not dud, three for tap, that's okay. I'd rather spend two instead of three, but what are you gonna do? I love that art on Sift, look at that. Yes, I am just showing off that I can now do this, but look at that art on Sift. Beautiful. And our rare is a phylactery lich. Ah, <sighs> not that great. Three black for a 5-5 five, five indestructible as phylactery lich enters the battlefield. Put a phylactery counter on an artifact you control. When you control no permanence with phylactery counters on them, sacrifice phylactery lich. Meh. There is, of course, some dastardly combos we can do. So that's the first pool of packs. Let's open up this second. I gotta say this too. I, I don't wanna, I'm gonna choose my words carefully. This is really touching that someone did this. And, oh, look at the top pack. This is conspiracy. Oh, wow. To throw a conspiracy pack into a chaos draft is just mwah, chef's kiss. Absolutely. What a wonderful thing to throw into a Chaos Draft. The fact that someone did this is very, very... Oh, wow, Commander Legends, too. This could be such a great draft. The fact that someone did this really means a lot. And uh, there was a time when I did get kind of affected. And I'm going to choose my words carefully here. But there was a time where I did get affected by the fact that, you know, all the little things Wizards of the Coast does for the community leaders or members or just people who make content regicide and you know they don't send that stuff and never did to me didn't never get a christmas card didn't never get like oh we send out those little gift things and i always tried to support and i understood it too i understand not working with a critic it sucks because i tell people don't buy this product and sometimes I say, Wizards is making a greedy corporate move or is doing something wrong. And so, you know what? We're not gonna send you booster packs. And I get that, but there was a time where it started to hurt a little bit because I felt, you know, am I not a part of this community? Am I not worthy of at least getting a nod? Roger Ebert gave thumbs down to a lot of movies, but I think they still invited him to the Oscars. 
And yet, I felt kind of isolated and rejected. And then, I started getting to talk to people in the community more and more than I had before. In some ways, the pandemic brought us online closer together. And I realized I am validated. I'm so validated. I don't need Wizards of the Coast sending me a little like, hey, thanks for all that you do getting people to play this game, getting people interested and excited about this game. I don't need that because I've got all of you. All your messages, all our interactions on social media and Discord and just when I do get to meet you in person. And then every now and then, walking into a game store and seeing a little thing like this that says, from the community. That's what matters, not the company that makes the game. I don't need their approval. I don't need their thanks. I support them and I support the game, but I support them by being critical. And I guess there's a lot of folks there that, you know, that doesn't sit right with. And I understand. And I, I don't want anybody... I, I was cautious about talking about how there was a period where I felt very sad about that. And I don't want anyone, like, don't write. Like, Why don't you even give the professor preview cards anymore? I don't want it. Give it off to someone, someone small, someone big, someone awesome. Celebrate the people who get it. Don't ever, ever, when another content creator gets a package from Wizards of the Coast, don't you ever, ever reply and say, oh, you didn't send one to the professor, please. That would, that makes me upset. Because what you need to do is say, congratulations the person who got it. You need to say, you're worth it. You deserve it. You do great content for us. That's rad. It's not a contest between us. We're all in the same community and we're all on the same side and we all love this game and we all want to be together again. And that's what it's about. And realizing that really like, eh, that made me feel a lot better. And I do realize that. And I hope that in your own way, in your lives, maybe you recognize sometimes the sources that you go to looking for approval isn't necessary because the approval is coming to you from other places you may not realize it. And if you think about it, the people that matter do approve of you in your life and do love you in your life. Born of the Gods. Part two in the original Theros trilogy. Again, we got to return to block sets. Oh, far as radiance. This was a fun set, original Theros. This was a very fun set. It was kind of like heading towards the end of, of I guess if you want to talk in terms of like Marvel movies, phase one, phase two, like phase, I guess, three of Magic the Gathering. We're in phase four now. Battle for Zendikar is when we transitioned from the three block sets and emphasis on competitive magic, game days, things at the local game store, to going into what we're at now. And that all began with Battle for Zendikar. Theros, and of course Tarkir was the last of it. Here's one of the old ad cards they put in there. Isn't that interesting? And speak of the devil, there it is, Battle for Zendikar. Now there are expeditions in here. I loved Masterpiece's Expeditions. I really wish they continued. In a way, that was what the Mystic Archive was, though not quite. But I really liked them. I think the Expeditions were the best of them all, though those Kaladesh Masterpieces were beautiful as well, the uh, Inventions. I did not like Battle for Zendikar, but I did like the Expeditions. I thought Battle for Zendikar was not a great set nor Oath of the Gatewatch. Are we gonna get one? I don't think we are. The chances are it was about one per case was the ratio. But boy, were they beautiful. Well, we got a Sunken Hollow. We did get a land. This was also the first real mistake they made and there's our full art. Beautiful little mountain there. Back when full arts meant something because they were rare and not just all over the place. And you know, I think the first big mistake, there's invocations in here, which they used as their excuse for not doing masterpieces anymore, but I think they just realized they could sell them to us as secret layers. 
I think their mistake was they didn't put the, the fetch lands in battle for Zendikar. They claimed it was because it's boring to watch in tournament play, blah, blah, blah. And that's when we started getting into this territory where they're not going to put the good stuff in booster packs. And the only good stuff that was going into booster packs, those, those masterpieces they took out, the good cards, the powerful cards, we'll save those for the Horizon sets at a premium price. Painful lesson indeed, my friends. A painful lesson indeed. I love Slitherblade. Slitherblade. Omen Cat was 50-50 with me. I really liked the uh, gameplay. Didn't like the setting so much. Maybe I just got depressed with the idea of the enslaved and then destroyed world was just a bit much. Combat Celebrant was a card that I really enjoyed. This was a great one, what a mythic. So if Combat Celebrant hasn't been exerted this turn, you may exert it as it attacks. When you do, untap all other creatures you control, and after this phase, there is an additional combat phase. Wow. And of course, the penalty for that is that an exerted creature won't untap during your next untap phase. Step. Steps are just a phase. And then we got these, I hated these. Punch cards, terrible. The idea that you're gonna punch this out. Look at this. Oh, I'm gonna punch this out. And then I'm gonna put it on my exerted card. How inelegant, how inelegant. So no masterpieces there. Here's our D&D &D set. Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, a draft booster. Apparently this sold like gangbusters. Oh, Wizard Companion. Anyone actually use that? Count life, enter tournaments. What's, enter tournaments? Okay. And more. And of course, we're going back to Dungeons and Dragons with Baldur's Gate. I don't know how I feel about it. I had wanted there to be D&D &D crossover, and then when it happened, I found myself a little eh on it. So I'm not entirely sure. I kind of wish it was a one-time special thing. I wish it had been done a little bit differently. And then I wish that was it. I don't like that now it's a regular mix treasure vault. But I see we got a shiny. Eye of the Beholder. And a forest, a little story. Yeah, a lot of it didn't land for me. I think it's because I don't like that idea of wizards forcing the narrative. In other words, they're, they're kind of making you do the cool things that happen organically. Gate Crash, the second set in our first Return to Ravnica. We might get a shock land in here. That would be cool. I liked the Return to Ravnica block. I think that unlike a lot of Return sets, Return to Ravnica did a great job capturing Foundry Street Denizen. Great card. Capturing what was great about the first time there and really embodying it and not abandoning it. Until I guess Dragon's Maze, that was a dud. But those first two, they were great. Standard was still really fun. Burning Tree Emissary, such classics used to come out. Remember when classics came out of standard instead of just monstrosities? Unexpected results. That was a weird one for the time. Ooh, and Night Watch. How old is this card? And it's, it's still nice and flat. All right, what wonderful packs are in here. <gasps> oh boy, Fate Reforged. We're Tarkiring it. We're Tarkiring it. Oh, Dragons of Tarkir. Oh, and Dragon's Maze. All right, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> what fun, we're going, what a wonderful little trip through history. We're gonna do Dragon's Maze. Terrible set, and yet there's some good stuff in there now. But this is not good. 
Oh, those clue stones, the waste. Hired Torturer. Nivix Cyclops, that's another popper. One that did some damage in its day. Restore the peace, but for the most part. Oh, War Leader's Helix. Trait Doctoring. Oh no. All right, so for those who don't know, trait doctoring. Change the text of target, tar that I can speak. Change the text of target permanent by replacing all instances of one color word with another or one basic land type with another until end of turn. Now you can cipher this, meaning that you may then exile this spell after casting it and encode it on a creature you control. Whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player, its controller may cast a copy of the encoded card without paying its mana cost. What a terrible card. All of that effort to change a red card to blue or an island to a plains until end of turn. Maze Glider, shiny. I'm so shiny. An Arakdos Guild Gate, just as worthless as the Clue Stone. So no, nothing too spicy. Now there are spicy things in Dragons of Tarkir and Fate Reforged. I'm gonna do Fate Reforged first. Now the fetch lands, which have gone up in price, not the ones that they reprinted, but of course the ones they did not reprint, they were only in Cons of Tarkir. However, I believe that in both Fate Reforged and Dragons of Tarkir, there was a one in something chance that they'd randomly replace the token with a fetch land. So we might get a fetch in one of these two. This was the last block set. Teamer Battle Rage. That goes in my ATOG deck, as well as Blitz decks. And it was a really fun standard. It had its issues, but it was a really fun standard. And I miss it, and I miss that sort of world. Oh, wow. Monastery Mentor. 2-2 two, two with prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a 1-1 one, one white monk creature token with prowess onto the battlefield. Ah, no fetch land. It's a wind scarred crag. And there's our monk token with prowess. How lovely. I get that in my chaos draft. Are we gonna get a fetch land here? Unlikely. I wish they had increased the odds of a fetch land in these because boy oh boy are those Tarkir slash onslaught fetches expensive now because they haven't been reprinted. Maybe Modern Horizons 3. How much you want to bet Modern Horizons 3 they do not reprint the onslaught fetches? They just, they're like, we're going to wait even though they're outrageously priced. Maybe they will. That was the big selling. That was big excitement Modern Horizons 2. Maybe they'll stick them in the Lord of the Rings set. Oh my god! No, they won't do that, because the Lord of the Rings set is all new cards. Mirror Mockery. Or as I call it, Meh Mockery. Got a shiny Anticipate. <gasps> is land, but is not a fetch land. Gin Monk. Close, but no cigar. All right, what else do we have here? Oh, there's some, oh, speak of Modern Horizons too. Innistrad Midnight Hunt, bleh. All right, we'll do them in that order. Dominaria. This is an example of I wish we could have stayed there for a full year. Now, Dominaria was a great set, and it was the last time that we had good old Richard Garfield, creator of Magic the Gathering, come in to show us how it was intended. And it turns out it was intended to be awesome, because Dominaria was awesome. And we're going back to Dominaria for not one, but two sets this year. The Brothers War, which will be in the past, and then Dominaria United, which we don't know what that is. It's probably, did they confirm Dominaria United's in the future? It's in the future, or not the future, the present, probably. I just wish they imagined Brothers War three sets. Daring Archaeologist. Not our best option. Oh, I love Adel is the Cinderwind. Was wonderful at the time. 
but I liked doing wizard tribal. I enjoyed it. All right, corset 2021, the last corset to ever that ever was or will ever be until they change their minds again. So this is what drives me crazy about this. So they've been making corsets forever and then they say, we're not gonna make them anymore. And everyone says, this is a mistake. They don't make them anymore. And then standard goes to hell. There's all kinds of problems because corsets fill a function and they go, you know what? We gotta bring them back. We gotta go back. Kate, we gotta go back. Do you get that reference? You're at least 25. And they bring them back. And now that after two years, three years, they say, eh, getting rid of them again. So which is it? Just make up your freaking minds. You know what the game needs, right? So just give the game Animal Sanctuary. Blomp, blomp. Give the game what it needs, please. And, and just stick with it. Why is everything changing all the time? Make up your minds. Do we need corsets or not? Imagine if this token right here that came in this pack from Magic Arena had a little code on it and I could enter that code. Or I could say right now in this video that is going to get 50,000, 60,000, maybe 100,000 views over the next couple months. I go, hey, Magic Gathering Arena, everybody. Go check it out. Here's a code somebody can get to get a pack. But of course, you can play for free and advertise that game or I'm just someone in a store and get it. Think of that influence instead of saying Magic Gathering Arena. It's going down the exact same road as Magic Online did. In fact, Magic Online is probably a more stable experience these days than Magic Arena. I don't know, I just don't get why they don't put the Magic Arena code in every pack. I do not get it. I feel like it would just bring so much more business their way in the long run. Sometimes you gotta spend money to make money, Watsy. All right, here we are in Modern Horizons 2, which is now dominated. Modern. If you're playing Modern, you need Modern Horizons 2 or Modern Horizons 1 cards for the majority of your decks. So much for the Modern format. And yet, I'm going to tell you the truth. I was playing current Modern in a tournament the other day. Well, local game store thing. And goodness gracious, my friends. I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, it was fun. It was the best damn time I had. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Love it. Modern is great right now. It's expensive. Woo! Solitude. This is a great card. Fantastic. It's expensive as heck. But if that is removed from the equation, it's fun as hell. Modern. Expensive as heck. Fun as hell. How about this? Expensive as heaven. Fun as hell. You know. All right, here we are at Midnight Hunt. Midnight Hunt was the better, in my opinion, of the two sets. I feel like I'm doing a terrible job, by the way. I'm feeling very self-conscious about my narration. I feel like everybody has turned this off and they wish I was just doing this like the Booster Box game. Let me know in the comments below if I should feel self-conscious, if you've even gotten this far. I said I was gonna give you something, which I am, and I mostly felt, yes, I felt like, a, you know, this is me. I didn't wanna be like showing off, oh, that looks so cool showing off like, hey, someone gave me this, aren't I great? And you'll sit out there and feel bad. So I'm gonna, I got a little thing that's been on my, sitting on my uh, shelf that I've been wanting to give to a viewer. Jadar, ghoul color of Nefalia. Don't like the black and white, don't like it. The lands are okay, but the idea of an entire set in black and white, no thank you. <gasps> oh my God, woo, we got it. We got it. Okay. Whew, I gotta get a sleeve. Okay, hang on, I got a sleeve right here. This is, so this is like in Magic Arena, they have wild cards and wild cards can be redeemed for any card on the client and they finally put them in real paper magic. This is a Magic the Gathering wild card. I'm gonna redeem it right here, ladies and gentlemen. I think what I need is a reserve list card. I need a Wheel of Fortune. Okay. Whew. So you can redeem these wild cards. You just write in the card you want. Woo, It's my little wheel. 
There we go, we got a wild card. Oh my God, do you know how expensive that is? Oh my God. There it is. I was thinking about getting like a dual land, like an underground sea, but I really want this for my uh, commander deck. Oh, wow. There we go. So they put these in packs randomly and you can now play with this card. Oh, that's, that's a hell of a pull. Hell of a pull. Look at that. We just got a Wheel of Fortune. We just pulled a, that's like a $300, $400 card these days. It's actually gone up. I haven't checked lately. Wow. Maybe I'll send that along to the winner. Well, I redeemed it. I shouldn't have redeemed it. Well, there's some good stuff in packs still. All right, here's our final one from the, the mystery benefactor. Gave me this wonderful gift. Uh, we've got Ikoria, Guilds of Ravnica. <gasps> Battle Bond! Ah, Battle Bond! Cons of Tarkir! Ah! Call time. Journey into Nyx and Ixalan. All right. Oh boy, Ikoria. Are we gonna crack a companion? Otherwise known as uh, Wizard's Folly. <laughs> Poor Ikoria, at least, oh, Forbidden Friendship. That has so many connotations. That has so many connotations. I don't know. Honey Mammoth, what is going on in this set? I really liked the uh, Ikoria art style for the uh, showcase cards. Sometimes I wonder if it would be nice if they did the entire set in that style and then put all those cards in collector's boosters. And that's why you spend $25 on them is because they've also, they've commissioned the art. There's actually a correlation. So it doesn't just cost that because they're a greedy corporation looking to stick a vacuum cleaner in your pocket and suck until all they get is lint and blood. But instead, there's that extra money for the thing because they've actually commissioned all this artwork more punch card junk. I don't know, I have crazy ideas like that. Guilds of Ravnica, we might get a Shockland in here. I liked our Return to Ravnica, and that was kind of a trilogy. War of the Spark wasn't quite the third set in that block, but it was close enough. It was still on Ravnica, it told the story, I liked the story, I liked the cards, I liked Standard, I liked a lot of what it brought to the table. That was, and there you go, three set block, essentially. I wish they had emphasized the Demir as heroes and Azurius as villains more. I feel like they still had, and again, part of this might be the failure of the uh, novels, Whisper Agent, that's in my mono black uh, devotion popper deck, I love it. But I really liked the idea that actually as Ravnica is being infiltrated, the Azurius are easy to corrupt, but the Demir are not. And the Demir actually turn into the saviors of Ravnica. Narc Amoeba, great reprint. Not that expensive, I don't believe, but a good reprint nonetheless. But I really liked that. I'm gonna save that battle. Oh, Battle Bond Gods of Tarkir. Oh, oh. Oh baby, okay. All right, we're gonna we're gonna put those down at the bottom. I'm sorry, I'm saving those for last. Kaldheim. Kaldheim was another example of where we should have stayed for uh, the entire year. Got to learn about it. Whoops. What the? Wait, is this a? This is a set booster. You can't draft with those. Well, I guess for a chaos draft, it works. That's interesting. Okay, so we wanna do it like this, I guess? Yes, all right, here's our artwork. Interesting, and I guess that'll work in a chaos draft, though it's fewer cards, so actually, no, that doesn't work. That's gonna throw us off. I'm gonna replace that with another 15 card booster because that doesn't work. You know what I'm gonna replace it with? I'll show you. I've got an idea. Yeah, that just doesn't work because uh, then we'll end up, someone will end up with missing a card. It'll screw everything up. I'm not a fan of set boosters anymore and I felt I was too kind on them at the beginning. Ooh, the world tree, double rare. Oh, we got a double rare. There you go. There's your chance at a double rare and a set booster and we got it. So I just so happen I have a booster pack that we haven't opened yet that I think will be really nice. Where'd it go? 
Where did you go? Where, where did you go? Kaladesh. I'm going to replace this set booster. Let me put this... Again, I am saving these for my draft, but that ain't going to work. So let's do Kaladesh. That'll be weird. <gasps> Join the multiverse! The best community in the multiverse at MTTGKLD for Kaldheim. I mean Kaladesh. Oh, Kaladesh was such a great set. Kaladesh, we were there for two sets. I would have liked three. Gear Keeper Serpent, love it. And we might get an invention. Hijack, love it. A tune with ether. Do you say ether or aether? I feel it's either. Do you get that joke, by the way, that I just did? I was like patting myself mentally on the back for coming up with that on the spot. That's how sad I am. I'm not sad, I'm happy. I'm doing really well lately. I hope you are too. And if you're not, I want you to know that you will one day again. Dynavolt Tower, not the rare I would have liked. I love that island art, but I would have loved a masterpiece more. Thop, thop. There, now we can continue the Chaos Draft. Journey into Nyx. I'll never forget the time at my local game store when someone who loved Elspeth discovered she had been killed in the Theros storyline. And then I, I said, with her own sword, and he looked at me just honestly crestfallen. It was like, he killed her with her own sword? Yep. That's why Heliod is a villain. What a dickweed. That is not a curse word, by the way. Let me know in the comments below if you think dickweed is a curse word. I had a lot of rhetoric, my old job. I taught introduction to rhetoric, rhetorical analysis, the college level. Battlefield Thaumaturge. Oh, beautiful art. Not that good of a card. Beautiful art, though. Salon. So Ixalan, Rosewater said recently, was a set that if you look at the metrics of sales and popularity and stuff, they consider to be the most recent set that, that did badly, in their opinion. We're so used to them saying every set is the best set ever, and every year is the best set ever. Go magic. But, uh... Rosewater said, Ixalan, nope. It was what they consider to be Le Disaster. Le Disaster. Unclaimed territory. I liked it. <gasps> Dragon Skull Summit, dual land. I like it. I liked that they reprinted the check lands in there and stuff. I liked Ixalan, but I, I see why it had problems. All right. Do we open Battle Bond next or Dragons of Tarkir? Um, I'm going to say... Battle Bond last. Cons of Tarkir. God, what a great set. Cons of Tarkir by itself is possibly, like, it, it's up there as one of the best sets of Magic, in my opinion. It really is, as is Battle Bond. But as for standard sets, yeah. Cons of Tarkir, one of the best. Do we get a fetch land? Wouldn't that be wild if we got a fetch land? Oh, wow. Well, thank you to whoever, again, gave me this. I, I did this to share this. I wanted to share it with the community. Just go down memory lane, talk, hang out, and I'll get to sit with some friends uh, this Friday, my time. I'm, of course, recording this ahead. And I, I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, Sultai Ascendancy. Are you Sultai just because you lost? I loved the cons, the flavor of it. I really think it was a mistake that they erased the cons from history because now there is no Sultai, now there is no Jeskai, even though we still, we the players use that term. I think it was really rich and flavorful uh, uh, little tribes or communities or whatever you want to call them. And I really think that was a bit of a mistake that they erased them and they went into the, the two two color uh, dragons of Tarkir, I think was a whiff. Oh, love it. Horde Ambusher, eh. No fetch land. But we do get this ad card for Magic 2015. New to Magic, hunt bigger game as Garrick. It's just Garrick, plain, simple Garrick. Hunt bigger game as Garrick, the multiverse's greatest hunter. 
or at the time biggest sociopath because he was under the influence, see by the purple eyes of the chain veil. Here it is, Battle Bond, one of the best Magic the Gathering sets ever made. Certainly one of the best sets uh, in terms of cool stuff for Commander. Hashtag Battle Bond 2. Oh, I haven't opened the Battle Bond in forever. Oh, wow. I was just, I just did a video about Battle Bond. I love Battle Bond. How were they able to offer Battle Bond at $4 a pack? And it was in stores everywhere, plentiful. And it sold well. Okay. Swamp. These aren't in reverse, are they? Oh, no! We didn't get to build up to it. All right. Virtues Maneuver. Long Road Home. Out of Bounds. Oh, it was just great. Just a great set. Well, thank you both for coming on this journey with me. And I'd like to give a little something back to the community as well. I know I can't give you a chaos draft with all these packs, but I can give you something very close to it, which I have an extra mystery booster box. And this is, it should have been called, you know, there was a big controversy at the time because people thought it was repacks because uh, they chose to keep the old frames on there. It looked like weird repacked cards and and such. And, I, and because it said mystery booster and they had had terrible products on the store shelves at Target and Walmart that a certain YouTuber said, Wizards of the Coast, these things on the shelves at Target and Walmart are bad for your brand. I don't care that it's just MJ Holdings that's doing it. It's making you look bad. And then they went and they did an amazing, great, awesome, great, great set and everybody reacted, oh man, it's just a ripoff like those mystery boxes on the shelves at Target and Walmart. And it's like, this is what I'm talking about. It's an ecosystem. It, it, it comes back to bite you in the butt when you allow crap to bear your name. Anyway, it's a great set. It should have been called Chaos Boosters because it's trying to simulate as best it can a chaos draft. And I'm gonna send this to one subscriber, one member of the Tolarian Community College anywhere in the world, just be subscribed to the channel and leave a comment. I want you to tell me who you're grateful for in your life or who's grateful for you in your life. Who do you love and who loves you? Either one or both because you are loved. You're definitely one of a kind. So is this gonna say the name? I might have to blur it out if it's personal info. I haven't read this. I don't know if you can see it there. Life can be chaotic, just like the contents of this Tolarian booster box. This was a Tolarian booster box. But we want you to know that you are always loved. Never forget that. You make us smile with your fun office hour skits, bring us valuable insights with your product reviews, and give us a quick hit of endorphins with Booster Box games. You have touched thousands of us in meaningful ways, brought happiness and entertainment to strangers, people, and friends you will never know. The least we can do is give you some empty joy MTG Joy, in return, you have, thank you, through this humble box. We hope it can time spiral your way back through the years to reflect on the good times and all the magic that makes magic magic. That's really sweet. We wouldn't stay special, stay nerdy, stay special, be you, professor. And that's me saying that message to everyone watching. Stay special. You are special. Stay ner Keep nerdy. Wear yourself like a mink coat, whoever you are, however you are. You wear yourself like a mink coat. Be you, Professor. We wouldn't have it anyway. Sincerely, us, the Tolarian community, community. So why the hell would I care that I don't get a booster pack or a Christmas card from Wizards of the Coast or a, a, a congratulations when I do a charity or anything like that when I have this wonderful community? I wouldn't have it any other way. 
I, I really want to thank not just the person who gave me this beautiful present, but each and everyone who stayed with me to the end of this video. I feel really good. Uh, I feel really good these days, this year. Last year was better, and this year will be better still. And that doesn't mean there aren't dark times ahead. But even in the smallest of places, we can find that joy. You are loved. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Special thanks once again to Star Trek Fleet Command for sponsoring this video. Remember, for a limited time, if you make it to level 5, you will unlock a free Origins Burnham. And if you also reach level 10 by February 10th, 2022, you'll be given the shards to tear up your Origins Burnham to rank 2. So, check out the links in this video's description and make it so. Thank you, Star Trek Fleet Command.